Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet these booty shorts. I'm just being goofy here. <laughs> they make for an excellent choice for a night out. These shorts provide an incredibly comfortable fit. Before we start, remember to hit that subscribe button. For this tutorial, you'll need medium weight yarn, scissors, 3.75 mm hook, dani needle, and measuring tape. We are going to begin by making a slip knot, so grab your yarn and wrap it around your finger twice. Then take the first loop and place it over the second loop. Then take the second loop and place it over the loop, which was the first one originally, and tighten that knot. You are then going to grab your crochet hook and insert it into the knot. Then you're going to pull the short tail of the yarn to adjust. Next, we're going to make our foundation chain. And to make our foundation chain, you're going to yarn over, that is bring the yarn from the back to the front and pull it through the slip knot. So again, you're going to yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop to form a chain. I have two chains so far and I'm going to make a foundation chain of 13. I'm going to block my 13th chain and add two more chains. Then I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the chain that I blocked or the third chain from the hook. Then I'm going to pull the yarn through the chain. I should have three loops on my crochet hook. Then I'm going to yarn over again and I will pull through all the three loops. You're going to yarn over and insert your crochet hook in the next chain. You're going to pull the yarn through the chain. You should have three loops on your crochet hook. You're going to yarn over again and pull through all the three loops. You're going to make one half double crochet in every stitch until the end of this row. I'll meet you here. I'm at the end of the row and I'm preparing for my last half double crochet. So in total I have 13 half double crochets. Following, you're going to chain 2 and you're going to turn your work. The chain 2 doesn't count as a stitch. You're going to yarn over and go into the first stitch from the previous row and prepare for a half double crochet. But this time, instead of doing the half double crochet the normal way, we're going to go into the back loop of that stitch and make a half double crochet. You're going to go into the next stitch and prepare for a half double crochet at the back loop, just like that. So you're going to be making half double crochets at the back loop of every stitch until the end of the row. So I will meet you here. Here I am at the end of the row and I have one last stitch left. So I'm going to make a half double crochet in the last stitch. And I have a total of 13 half double crochets. Following, I'm going to chain 2, then I'm going to turn my work. The chain 2 is exempt from the stitch count. Then I'm going to yarn over and prepare for a back loop half double crochet in the first stitch. Yarn over and go into the back loop of the next stitch and prepare for a half double crochet. I'll be making one half double crochet in every stitch until the end of this row. I'll meet you here. I'm at the end of the row and I'm preparing for my last half double crochet. Following, you're going to chain two, then you're going to turn your work and prepare for a half double crochet at the back loop of the first stitch. Then you're going to go into every stitch and make a back loop half double crochet and you'll continue this till you have your desired length. These shorts don't have a zip or an opening, so the waistband has to pass your hips. It has to stretch enough to pass your hips. The waistband has to be able to pass your hips because we wear the shorts from down to up. If, if, if the waistband is too short, it's not going to be able to pass past your hips. So make sure when it stretches, it can pass past your hips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have your desired length, we'll close the waistband using single crochets. Consequently, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to insert my crochet hook in the first stitch and also insert my crochet hook on the first stitch of the other end. Then I'm going to prepare for a single crochet. So I'm going to pull the yarn through the stitches, then pull the yarn through both loops. Go into the next stitch of both sides and then you're going to pull the yarn through the stitch and pull through both loops. You're going to be creating single crochets in every stitch of both sides to close the waistband until the end of the row. I'll meet you here. I'm at the end of the row and I'm making my last single crochet to close the waistband. In total I have 13 single crochets but that will depend on the number of stitches you made. Following you're going to turn your work so that the seam is on the wrong side and you're working on the right side. Now we're going to be working on this side so I'm going to chain one and I'm going to grab my safety pin but you can also grab a stitch marker so that we can mark the beginning. Then I'm going to go into any visible stitch and make a single crochet. There's no rule here. Go into any visible stitch and make a single crochet. To begin the next round, we are going to chain three. You can see I'm not chaining three here. I'm going into the first stitch and making a single crochet. Then I'm going to go into the loop, that loop over there. Let me show you clearly with a needle. So this, this, this is the loop at the front. So I'm going to go into this loop here and make another single crochet so this is a stacked single crochet which i have been obsessed with of late but i don't recommend doing it when you're going around a pattern i'll, I'll show you why it's not i don't recommend it instead chain three and then go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet yarn over again and pull through two loops yarn over again and pull through the remaining two loops Yarn over and prepare for a double crochet in the next stitch. Insert your hook through the stitch, pull the yarn through the stitch, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So you're going to be making one double crochet in every stitch until the end of this row. So go round and I'll meet you here. I'm at the end of the round and I'm going to close this round with a slip stitch. So if you chain three, you're going to create a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch. But since I made a stacked single crochet, I'm going to create a slip stitch on the stacked single crochet where I just removed the safety pin. So next, you're going to chain three. I highly recommend you chain three instead of doing what I'm doing here. 
I regretted it later. So I'm making a stacked single crochet. But you chain three. And then after you've chained three, if you want a perfect straight seam, turn your work. It's going to create a perfect straight seam. So chain three, then turn your work. So this is me. I've made my stacked single crochet and I'm putting my stitch marker to mark the beginning. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet. So and make a double crochet. So I'll be making one double crochet in every stitch until the end of this round so i'll meet you here i'm at the end of the row and i have one stitch left it looks like i have two stitches left but it's one stitch left so i've made my last double crochet that stitch that looks like a stitch is not a stitch it's a it's the slip stitch from the previous row then i'm going to prepare for a slip stitch in my stacked single crochet next you're going to chain three you will chain three and turn your work the chain three counts as your first stitch and the reason why you're turning your work is because it's going to create a perfect seam we want that perfect seam that straight line yeah <laughs> so after you've chained three and turned your work you're going to go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet and then you're going to make a double crochet in every stitch until the end of the round so continue with this pattern of the previous two rows until you have your desired length of your crotch area So this is why I was recommending that you chain three and turn your work. You can see here my seam is straight, right? But at the beginning, it's slanted diagonally when I was doing the stacked single crochet. I still have the same number of stitches, but the problem was the method that I was using. So continue chaining three and turning your work. It makes a straight seam. I'm going to chain 10. This will prepare for our leg hole. And then I'm going to connect on the other side, on the middle stitch. I will connect to the slip stitch. Consequently, I'm going to chain three. The chain three counts as our first stitch. Then I'm going to go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet. So I'll go into that stitch and make a double crochet. Then I'm going to go in the next stitch and make a double crochet. So I'm going to be making one double crochet in every stitch until uh, here i'll meet you here here i am at the chains the 10 chains that i made to separate the legs so i'll be making one double crochet in every chain Once I'm done, I'm going to make a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch. I'll connect to the slip stitch. So I'm done with that round. I'm going to chain three. Then I'm going to turn my work. And the ch chain, the three chains count as my first stitch. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet. And in the next one and prepare for a double crochet so i'll be making one double crochet in every stitch until the end of this round i'll meet you here i'm at the end of the row and i'm going to connect this round with a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch after i'm going to chain three the chain three counts as my first stitch turn my work it's essential that you turn your work so that we have a straight seam then you're going to go into the second stitch and make a double crochet 
and go into the next stitch and make a double crochet and make one double crochet in every stitch until the end of this row so you'll be repeating this pattern for a few more rows i think i did five more rows i'll meet you once you're done you're going to chain three that's your first stitch actually i made four more rows so in total i had five rows now we're going to do the edging at the bottom so the chain three is your first stitch then in the next stitch you're going to make a front post double crochet so instead of making a double crochet the standard way you're going to yarn over and go under it but at the front and make a double crochet just like that so that's a front post the next stitch you're going to go under it but from the back and make a double crochet at the back under it and make a double crochet so that's a back post you're going to yarn over and go into the next stitch under it at the front and make a double crochet the next stitch you're going to go under it at the back and make a double crochet just like that the next one you're going to yarn over and go under it at the front and make a double crochet the next one you'll go under it at the back and make a double crochet just like that so you're going to continue with this pattern until the end of this row so i'm going to meet you over here i'm at the end of the row and i have one more stitch left and it's a front post so i'm going to connect this round with a slip stitch and i'll make a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch i'll connect with a slip stitch so consequently we're going to chain three and the chain three counts as our first stitch and we're going to turn our work and depending on which double crochet you landed on i landed with a um, back post double crochet so i will go under it but from the back and make a back post double crochet the next one should be a front post so i'll go under it but at the front and make a front post double crochet the next one is a back post so i will go under it but at the back and make a back post double crochet it's easier to see the pattern now so the next one is a front post i will go under it but at the front and make a front post double crochet the next one under it but at the back and make a back post double crochet right now it's visible you can you can clearly tell which one is the front post and which one is the back post so you're going to continue with this pattern until the end of this round i'll meet you once you're done see you i'm at the end of the row and i have one more stitch left and it's a back post so i'll be making a back post double crochet then i'm going to connect this round with a slip stitch i'll slip make a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch to close the round consequently you're going to chain one and cut off your yarn so we are done with one leg We are now going to be working on the second leg hole. Remember where we placed the stitch marker on the middle stitch. So I'm going to be attaching my yarn on the next stitch of the middle stitch to begin the second leg hole. Once you've attached your yarn, you're going to chain three. You're going to do the same thing that you've done on the other side. So I'm here, here I'm chaining three and i'm going to go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet and the next one and i'm going to place a double crochet so i'll be placing a double crochet in every stitch until the end of this row so i will meet you over here 
see you here i'm at the crotch area and i had 10 stitches at the crotch area so i'm going to be placing a double crochet on top of the double crochet from the crotch area from the other side so i'm going to make sure i have the same number of stitches on each leg yeah Once I'm done, I will close the round with a slip stitch on the third chain of the first stitch. So this is it. And I'm going to chain three. The chain three counts as my first stitch. Turn my work and go into the next stitch and prepare for a double crochet. So I'll be placing one double crochet in every stitch of this row you're going to do the same thing that you did on the other leg exactly the same thing i'll meet you once you're done i made this strap for the waist to help me tighten it when i wear the short i think i made 150 or 200 chins after I've inserted it into my darning needle, I'm going to find the middle and then I'm going to, what do I say? I'm going to hmm, do what I'm doing <laughs> on the video. Make sure you do it at the topmost part. It looks better when you do it at the, at the, at the top part of the shorts at the ridge at the top part of the waistband hmm? so do that all the way around the shot is now complete once you've attached to your tie if you want you can put this flower i'm going to show you how to put this flower it makes for a cute design but you don't have to do it but if you'd like stick around I'm going to show you how to make a lily of the valley flower and to begin we are going to make a magic ring.
like and subscribe to let me know you want more videos like this one and follow me on social media at notkisses.